Getting things started off this morning. It's another tournament. It's actually part two. This is the second day of my tournament. I'm on the Susquehanna River. I'm up in Pennsylvania. If you haven't seen the first day, it rained a lot, wind blew. It was really frustrating, but I caught fish. Not as many as I'd hoped for, but I'm happy. I'm sitting at 34th out of 143 anglers. This is a national event. People can come from anywhere. I paid $250 and splitting an Airbnb with several other guys. So I got some money invested, but it was it's worth the trip coming up here. This place is an amazing fishery. I'm in the Crescent Shoaly and I'm pa uh, paddling, which makes it really tough. I was really wore out, but I think I can jump up in the leaderboard. My, my goal, the, the ultimate goal would be to get the top 15 uh, and that does get paid out. Like I said, I'm in 34th. I'd have to have a really good day but there's a lot of really good fishing here. I don't know if we're gonna float down. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. It really depends on the wind and how aggravated I get, but I, I may float down to another takeout and get somebody to bring me back. But uh, I'm, I'm ready to go, I'm gonna get out here and uh, lines start casting here in just a few minutes. Here we go, we got one. Fish number one. Look at these guys. It's a little one compared to here. This is gonna be a tough day. I think I'm gonna have to drift because the wind's just blowing me all over the place. Well, number one, 14 and a quarter. In the current on a spinnerbait. Not by much, but another fourteen incher. That's two. Oh no. Winched up for like fifteen seconds. It was awesome. Man. scar on him that is nasty looking let's get that guy back in the water i can't take too much time trying to fight this wind and catch fish the fish are biting they're there they're in the spots that i think they're at and um but it's 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 a lot of work getting to them at least we got oh man if that sun would stay out 
and the wind would die for a little bit. It'd be halfway nice. fish just inhaled the spinnerbait. I mean, why would I use anything else? Although they're about to break this one after I've bent it up so many times. All right, this will be my hmm, fourth keeper that I'm measuring. Yep, 15 three quarter, not bad. Oh, the guy over there is catching them too. <laughs> Me and this other guy put in the same place yesterday. I talked to him and we both came back. We both caught fish here and actually are pretty close to the same score. I think like an inch or two apart. Um, I mean, either one of us could have a good jump. It's all about getting, um, you know, those bigger, those 18s and 19s is what you really need because there's so many of them in this river. So. Um, there's a lot of people catching them. If you're, if you're not catching those big ones, it's hard to compete. I got two solid ones, but if I could replace, if I could get all three of my other ones over 18, I'd, I'd be a really good day. I, I, would, I need at least 90 inches today. I had 85 something yesterday, which was a solid day, but I know I could have had more, but I, it, I, could, I could only fish about half as much as everybody else because I am spending all my time paddling and fighting the current, getting blown off my spot. And that's really, uh, that really makes it a lot tougher. I don't want to be whiny over here, but it's a huge disadvantage being in a paddle kayak on a river in the wind. Uh, all those things together really makes it tough. All right, I gotta make a decision. Do I wanna start floating downstream? It's nine o'clock. I got four fish on the board. Um, two of them are decent, two are 14s, pretty small. There's fish out here, but it's so hard getting back up. But if I commit to going downstream, I'm gonna have to really go far, which I think that's what I'm gonna have to do. Paddling takes too much time. I don't have enough time to cast. Already hard enough with the wind blowing you. Even going downstream is probably gonna be a little tough. But I think we're just gonna start floating. Hopefully it doesn't take too long and we don't have to like paddle to make up time. But, and we'll find somebody to give us a ride back, I guess. Right, let's just start going. Man, there's a fish. Little guy. Well, that was quick. Probably a 12 incher. I'm not even gonna measure it. Oh my 
Always on. That's a good, that's a good. Yeah, that's a big one. That's our good keeper right there. Oh, the spinner came out. Spinner blade came out in the net. Oh, and it broke my spinner blade, but I landed him. Man, I've been, I've broke a couple of these spinner blades. I've caught so many fish. They bend it out, bend it out. Oh, I'm glad he got landed though. My phone just about fell in the water, but I got it tethered. That's a nice smolly. That's the kind of keepers that could get us up in the top 15, which is uh, places getting paid out. This is at least a three pound fish. Just massive. All right, close your mouth. Oh yeah, 18. I couldn't even get an 18 yesterday. Oh, we almost 18 and a quarter. Yes, sir. 18 and a quarter. I started drifting. And look, look at that. Wish I could weigh some of these fish. I don't have time to do it. I ain't got time to weigh these fish. That's nice. If that's my biggest one today, that's not bad. But that is gonna go a long way for helping me out. Let's go ahead and upload it and see what our five fish are. We got five fish in there. <laughs> this is how it's funny. It says I'm seventh. Of 146. I'm taking a picture of that. That's pretty funny. Right now, currently, if the, but there's a lot of a lot more fishing, a lot more uploads. I'm sure a lot of people haven't uploaded their five fish yet. So um, hey, you know, there we go. But that's um what we need to give myself a really, really good chance in the top to be able to climb up to the top 15 is to get th like three more like that. But I'll take some bigger ones. So spinnerbait's working. Another broken spinnerbait, but I've got several with me, and I don't know. I've never had a spinnerbait that lasts forever. They wear it; they can wear out. But um, these fish are so rough on them. Where's my little trailer? the 14 so now our smallest is a 14 two five I think oh yeah that's a good that's a good one I think he's big. Yeah. Well, he's pretty good size. Oh my god. About like missed the net. Another upgrade. Get rid of that uh, 14 now. And you can see how their build are just so strong. They live in this current, they eat a lot, and they get strong. That's a beautiful fish, 16 incher. Really nice. All right, some uh, the, some changes. It's 949. Josh is back in the lead. He's got a 20 and a half. He's got five good ones. I'm at 
12th. So people have uploaded, I, up, I upgraded and I've gone down, but fish are gonna keep coming in. 12th is not gonna hold. So if I'm, if I'm at 12th right now at almost 10 o'clock, that is not gonna hold. I'm gonna, I could probably drop a long way. So my smallest is 1525. There it is. Wow, get in here. Get in here, fish. I don't know if he's gonna help or not, but he is lively. About a 14. Get Fifteen and a quarter. Same size, already got it. Getting caught in some current here. It's gonna be hard to get out of this. Gotta look, see where we're at. I want to go down that, but it looks, oh, it looks good down here. It's only 10:19, got till 3:30, so several more hours. I got to decide: do I want to go ahead and go downstream uh, through stuff? I'm not sure. I, I mean, I'm sure I'd, I'm really confident I'd find some fish, and I think if I cover water, I'd be able to be fishing easier. But I also know there's big fish right over here where I just came through. But I, it's gonna take me so much work uh, to get up there. And if I drift back down again, I have to go back up again. I don't know. I really don't want to do that. That's gonna be so hard. Uh, but if I could, if I could, uh, if I could catch one or two more good fish, it's gonna give me a good chance stay in the top 15 but right now we're we're not gonna not gonna do it i definitely need some more fish let me eat and drink something and think about it uh, i don't think i'm gonna go downstream i just don't know I don't want to go through there and I might have to get out and wait. I don't really don't even want to get in the water to cold or after I get, the water's not cold, but once I get out, the wind's blowing, it makes it feel freezing cold. Uh, we're going to just mess around. I don't even know how much more, <laughs> I got so much more time to fish, but I'm not going to try to, I'm not trying to kill myself. I know there's fish there. It's just so hard to get to them. Sixteen and a quarter. That's a couple inch upgrade. We'll hang on to that for a while. I'm gonna get this little tricky sitch little spot. I got current coming a couple different ways. 
I feel like at any moment I could tip over. Uh, that's a little weird. I'm getting little ones. I need a. I need me another big one. my first time ever fishing here I can't get over how beefy these fish are I mean that guy's probably 14 inches he's like 14 inches not gonna help but such a good quality fish and fat. Update, it's 1218. I am getting wore down, but we're gonna, I got a top water and a new spinnerbait tied on. I lost one over there. And uh, I think we're gonna, I'm back up to the, like the top of this pool where these um, rapids are. I made a big loop today. Um, I'm gonna drift back down again. because Every time I've drifted through there, I've caught fish. So I gotta make a try to just get an upgrade. Fish, fish. A little it's kind of slowed down here. I mean, I caught fish, but I'm used to catching them like crazy. Whenever I drift through this area, this is my third, fourth time drifting like down through here. Second time today, but I've caught fish and I've caught multiple of it. I think I've caught two or three fish every time I've drifted through here. It's some of my best ones. I could have did this all day run up about a thousand yards maybe a quarter mile something like that run up drift down to the end of it run back up drift down I would have I would have caught so many more fish I know that and I think I, I would have came across some bigger ones Oh, yeah. Oh, he's not bad. I think, anyways. Uh, I don't know. Looks like maybe another 16 incher. Another 15 and a half. Need, a, need another one about two inches bigger than that. It took me like 45 minutes 
to get from my last spot over here to the bank. I am done. Supposedly another hour of fishing left, but not for me. Off the water. Lines are out in five minutes, but you know. But good news is, I got some Papa John's. This gas station over here at some random little town in Pennsylvania uh, has a uh, Papa John's in it. So yeah, I got a pizza. I'm about to start heading home. Probably won't get home today, might stop. It's a 10 hour, it's nine and a half hour drive. But um, good news is at least uh, two of the guys that, in the house that I stayed with, uh, I stayed at are in the top five, I think. Drew Gregory and Josh Shrinko. And I think Josh is gonna win the thing. Uh, it looks like he's got it wrapped up. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap up my whole trip up here to Susquehanna, uh, the trip up here to the Pennsylvania thing, the, the two day tournament. I'm gonna wrap it all up once I've processed everything. It, uh, Cause it was, it was incredible fishing, but horrible conditions. So uh, I'll give you my final thoughts back at the house. I gotta start off by saying how unreal the Susquehanna River is. It's just, it, it's, I am so glad that I went on this trip. This is a trip of a lifetime. Like it's one of those places that it just changes you, how you think about river smallmouth fishing. Um, especially if you're from the South, you're not a smallmouth guy. And then, but if you are like a river person and just like a, you know, shallow water fishing type of person, this is like the ultimate place to go. And the, the fishing is just so different. I still can't wrap my head around like how different it was than the river fishing around here. And just, you know, I, there's obviously things that can translate, but there was so much that I learned and had and figured out as I went. And, um, and just the, the massiveness of the river, you know, and then how many fish are in there. I'm not used to stuff like that. Like, so it, it was, it was a totally different type of river. Um, but like if you're usually like those kind of rivers, you're going to figure it out. You're going to figure out how to find some fish in there. And, um, I, I, there was definitely a section that I knew was just holding tons of fish. And it was like a, a section in the middle of the river which there was fish everywhere, but there was just one section that I kept going through that every time I floated through there, I caught at least three fish and I caught all my biggest fish from there. Like the, my four or five biggest fish were all through there from both days. So like I was wanting to go explore more areas, but with the wind as bad as it was, I figured I'd just go somewhere that I kind of knew where some of the fish were. And, um, it turned out, I mean, it turned out to where I caught a ton of fish. Now it was, I was exhausted and just miserably aggravated with how strong, how the wind blew all day. And I was fighting the current going up. I didn't really know much about how the trip was going to go and, and what I was going to get into. Are, is everybody doing float trips? I like, I, so, um, going to a national tournament where with, you know, a hundred and 40 something anglers and a lot of them uh a lot of them have already fished that river se several times some of them live up there and um going but and a lot of them travel to a lot of big events so these were like some of the top people you know i'd say all 50 of these guys fished a lot at least 50 of these guys fish a lot of national stuff and a lot of big events so getting 30 uh whatever i was out of 100 140 something people i, I was i wasn't too upset I just knew that I could have find, I knew that there was more fish. And that only, only thing I was aggravated was that I knew there was more fish in that area that I was just too exhausted and too tired to go back for. So definitely an awesome trip overall, uh, three and a half days up there. Um, big shout out, Josh Shrinko. He's the guy that has a Smalley Talk podcast. And um, also the Ashigan 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 I, I can't remember how we say it, Ashigan brand. It's a smallmouth brand uh, it's also i think the name for smallmouth in another language but um he he killed it he 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 fished away and it was cool listening to him talk i've already heard him like tell the story uh he fished an area like that he like a hundred yard area i think he said and he just kind of went went up and down fishing this area both days all day and i think he said he caught like 10 fish each day where i caught like 
I don't even know, 20, at least 20 fish each day and could have caught a lot more, but he was fishing a different way. And he knew that he kind of, you know, really had dialed in where he, he knew he had confident that there was going to be, you know, big fish bite. And, um, it was, it's really cool to hear a story, hear him tell it. And, uh, yeah, he, he took it home and, uh, I, I was happy that he got that. He's, he was in one of the guys in the house that I was staying with. Drew Gregory invited me to come stay at the house and he ended up getting six and Drew, Fish is totally different. If you follow him, you, yes, or he's on social media a lot, and he was covering water. He was in a shoaly with um, a motor, and he's just he's moving, he's running and running and gunning, and covering a lot of water, probably catching a lot more fish, uh, but you know, and covering water. So that that was like totally different. And then there was uh, like there was like nine guys at the house that I stayed at, and everybody did really good. Most of them, I was probably one of the lowest placed guys there. But I learned a lot and um, got to, you know, see some other anglers and kind of see their setups and um, talk to people that uh, guys I never met before. And so this whole trip was just a really fun um, trip. Learned a lot, met a lot of people. And I wish I wasn't so exhausted. I, I would love to go into the awards, but I was I was done. W once about one o'clock hit, one or one thirty, I knew I was just done. I had to get back up to a ramp. And then I walked back up to my truck, which is like another 300 yards, and then drove back to that ramp. Uh, I just I just couldn't give any more effort um, <laughs> to do fish anymore. If you've never done any um, kayak tournaments, or maybe you've done some small ones and you want to do some big ones, I would. And and if, if you ever want up to the, go to the go up to the Susquehanna, I would definitely suggest doing figure picking a tournament and going up to it. I think Bass Nation. That I was in a Bass Nation one. There are two day tournaments. There's also um, Drew Gregory's uh, hosting a uh, kayak adventure series where they're putting on some tournaments and he's going to do one on the Susquehanna uh, in the summer also, uh, a little bit further north than where I was. I'm kind of really interested in that one because it's going to be further up the river where it's a little skinnier, but kind of the same kind of stuff. So uh, it's, that sounds really fun, but it would definitely be worth doing a tournament because in a tournament, you're just going to push yourself a little more and you're really going to you know, try harder. At least I do. When it, that's why I like going to these places for tournaments because it really makes me work hard and makes me push myself. Also, I have something to compare to. Like, how good am I doing? I can I can check. There's people fishing all around me, and uh, you know, uh, people fishing all over. Are they are they finding out something I'm not figuring out? Am I doing better than I thought I would? So that's why I really like to go to these bigger tournaments. And my goal is to kind of go to one every once in a while. I do a lot of my local stuff. And uh, I'm actually qualified for the Bass Nation Nationals in Oklahoma in March. So that's going to be a national event. That's back-to-back -back years I get to fish in the national event. I qualified through my state tournament. So, um, yeah, I've been I've been catching also. So also I've been catching so many fish on spinnerbaits. And a lot of the guys use chatterbaits. Um, a lot of guys are using topwater, um, uh, buzzbaits, you know, whopper ploppers, uh, jerkbaits. You know, there, there's a lot of lures that catch fish, but I wanted to go with a lure. Like if I was, if I can catch them on a spinnerbait, I have a lot of confidence in a spinnerbait that I'm going to keep throwing it. Especially when I can't just sit a spot and pick it apart with different lures. I would love to have been able to just kind of sit on a spot a little bit better and pick it apart. And I could have, I had an anchor and I, I could let it down and stop every once in a while. But I don't know. I, I Looking back at it, I probably, probably should have like, hit a spot that I, that I thought was going to good and just make, um, you know, cast with a few different lures and kind of stay in that area. Um, but I knew drifting, I was going to come across fish too. So, uh, and everything I caught my fish on, which was, this was the craziest thing. The, all the fish I caught were only in current. I didn't catch a single fish out of slack water or behind a big boulder, um, behind an Island, unless there was current, they were all in current. And there were certain areas where that, like I said, I had this one area where I really knew that fish were there and, um, it was just big, flat, open area in the middle, had a consistent, you know, current about two to three foot deep. And you could see these underwater shoals and you would see the ripples. I could see them the first day easy, um, because until the wind started blowing. So in the wind is blowing and choppy, it made it a lot harder to see them. But I, I consistently caught fish off these underwater shoals that were long and they didn't come out of the water. As long as they stayed underwater, that's where I got all my fish, all my big fish from. 
And it was in a, a couple of them, I'd see them come up and hit it, but most of the time it was cloudy and rainy and windy and choppy. So it, I'm a lot of casts. I'm just kind of fan casting and like, I know I'm in the area, but I can't see it exactly. And, um, but man, so many fish. Thanks for watching. It's a long recap, but there was just, there's so much to cover and it was just such a, a, a event that kind of really opened my eyes and, it's one of those trips like you get to go on that just changes so much about how you think about a place. Um, even the whole Pennsylvania area, all the little bitty towns, like there's all these like little town after little town after little town. I even got stopped in a, I got stuck in a parade the first the first day I go up there to go fishing. I couldn't get out of my ramp for like 20 minutes because there was a parade in the little town I was going through. So, anyways, uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for the support. Uh, this was an expensive trip, so you know it cost a lot of money to be able to go to these things, and. All the money I make is from YouTube and the sponsors that help me out. So um, hopefully I, I keep being able to make enough to go on these trips and learn and have fun and then get to bring them to you. And thank you so much for the people that say they enjoy it and watch it. And um, people have really enjoyed some of these tournament videos. And um, it's it's been really fun for me to do too.